Hey. So, uh, tonight I'm going to continue messing about with uh, stats writing, uh, both stats D and the in-memory version. Uh, first things first, I, I did some reading about stats and discovered that I don't need to do this part of the stats writing because uh, when you query stats you can do something along the lines of uh, let's do toggle dot whatever ID state groups some group key and then you can just do a star and this will sum up and aggregate all of the logs that are under that path so we don't actually need to write the first value down here because the more specific ones will be rolled up as well so that simplifies things a bit uh, as I also mentioned the other day um, I want to switch these to be rendered so that I can use the actual values. And I also want to switch to the StatsD library I'm using because there is a uh, more dependency friendly one. But I'll come back to that bit in a bit because we can continue as is. So the first thing I'm going to do is update. I guess it's the count one that I'm going to use most of the time. So rather than taking a string key, uh, I don't know if I'm actually using that interface, so I might just copy that out a second and see if that is actually used. But what we're going to have here is a string format and then params. Now, I could do object array would let me pass in anything such as integers and I'm going to two string them anyway and I will pop yeah so I'll do an object array I think just because it makes the calling code a bit easier although it is slightly less efficient uh, I'll just call it parameters now oh, that appears not to actually be building even I've... what been four projects. Here's a solution explorer that's not updating. That's weird. Build. No, we're not going to build. God knows what's going on with this. All right, I did have like four other projects open, so we'll just relaunch Rider. for the background process to finish terminating. Otherwise, if you try and launch a second copy, it just does nothing. For all that I grumble about Rider, I still prefer it to Visual Studio. I, mean, I make exceptions just because it's, you know, early access software. It's bound to be broken in places. Okay, well, what was your problem? Build targets were not found. Yeah, don't lie to me. Oh, we can right click. Re okay, reload is disabled. Something. Oh, and there we go. Makes no sense. Right, now let's see if we can actually build it. Oh, yes, we can build this time. <coughs> right. It's just the right count methods. So we'll 
comment out this for now. And right count now has a new signature, so we'll just copy that across. I could have used Resharper's um, uh, refactor signature, but I wanted to actually follow where things were used. So I didn't. Next. Right. Uh, right no longer exists for the time being. And that now has a new signature. Now I think what we'll do is we'll implement an extension method which will let us do the formatting for us. Because at the moment, uh, I'm going to want named parameters passed in. Which in the case of this logger debug output, actually, it's fine. We'll just say statistic. Plus format parameters. Now hopefully that takes a params of object args. So yes, this will just work in that this will have an internal implementation that does the formatting for us. Uh, that. Comment that out. And now we need some way to uh, have a render method on it which takes the parameters in. Like that. Now, we'll actually need to implement render to do something useful. So let's create a new file in here uh, extensions. Make the class static and do a public static string render this string itself format and then params object array parameters we're just going to return the format string for the time being just wanted to compile at the moment Then we should write some tests for it and then do a little test-driven development. Uh, yep, that doesn't need to exist because we commented that out for now. I might just remove it in its entirety because uh, yeah, the likelihood of us using write for a specific value rather than account is low, I'd say, at the moment. In fact, I'm going to go through and delete these. That, we just expect a key, and we won't bother with the parameter. Oh, actually, we could leave that there. Now we have both tested. Do right count. That. Yeah, that. No, that. Uh, and the value, yes, one, not sure. Right, 
let's just run these tests because I'm not sure if I've broken them or not. Doing anything? Maybe, maybe not. On all of them. Thank you. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. Right, now let's get rid of these. I don't like commit, committing commented out code. Because well, if you want it back, that's what source control's for. Okay, I'm not entirely certain how this works out. How to populate this list of... Sometimes when I control tab, there is a, a large list of files open. Sometimes there's none. See? Quite sure what's going on there. Alright. That was all of them. Let's have a look and get. Yep, nothing major commented out apart from the ICE statistics writer. Now, did any of those else have commented out ones? So we'll just commit that for now. Backdoor one. Change right count. To, uh, I guess it's named parameter template. Now it's a shame that I don't think there is a way of doing that kind of rendering built into the framework. So we're going to be left to doing implementation of this method ourselves. So we'll go into our test project. Structure statistics class extensions tests. Uh, as this is an extension method, and we're just going to check it with a bunch of parameters. Do uh, when Rendering a string, and then we'll make this a theory. Do lots of inline data to it, which will be string uh, format. Now, the downside to do a theory is that you can't pass an argument array into it. I can't make this a params. X unit just won't find it. Now we could either use a method to generate that, so we could do uh, I don't know object where parameters string expected. Yeah, and then we can do uh, member data name of ring rendering cases. Now if we do a public static is it public static I enumerable of object array that Then we can now in here do uh, yield and not valid. Ah, uh, because I'm trying to use a complete method body. Right. 
now it's happy. So we'll do yield return new object and then each line gets to be one of these so we'll have our input which is going to be I don't know, format with no placements uh, array empty object and we expect that Now that's a bit wide, doesn't read very well. Let's do uh, var values equals new list object array. And I think let's do that in there. Might not even need that. No, I don't. Turn values. Right, that's our first one. Do the second one with uh, one placement. And we'll do test replacement, so we need to pass it an object array. Actually, we can cheat and do that. Test. That's our first case. Yeah, and then we'll just do the same again, but for with first. second replacement and here we shall expect one two so we can just prove that we uh, supply two variables we don't just replace both of them with the same one so those are our values we're returning those should be fine it can't be made private because Xuna needs to find it. So now that we've got our values being fed into here, we can now say uh, format dot render reindeer render parameters should be expected. That's it. I just put that on multiple lines. I don't know if that reads better or not. <laughs> now, hopefully this will fail. Because this is, well, the first case should pass. But I haven't implemented anything other than returning the format string directly, so it should fail. That is. There we go. The first one passed, but obviously the second two don't. So now we want to. Now we want to to do all the replacements. Now I'm vaguely thinking I can do it with a regex, which now of course means I've got two problems. I just want to get every value and then take it from that index in the parameter. Yeah, I think a regex will do it. So, uh, var expression, I don't know, rx, that's a short name. New regex. And our pattern will be a squiggly bracket followed by a squiggly bracket. Better make that a verbatim string, otherwise we're going to have to escape everything 400 times. And we want all the content of that as few times as possible. So there, if you're not familiar with regex, this will match everything, but it's greedy. So it'll keep matching as many characters as it can until it hits the last occurrence. 
this character. But we don't want that. We want to just match the first one and then match as few characters as we can, which is what this question mark does, until we hit one of these. Which I think will work. Um, I'm also going to make it ignore case as well. No, actually I'm not because there's no cases involved. So hopefully I can do regex.replace. Now does this take a callback? It does. So string input and an evaluator. Hopefully that gets a, an integer count to it as well. So our input is format. And we apparently can have a callback. Which will need to return something. So if we do match index is now, is that the count of the match? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so we'll use that. Uh, just see if this works. Parameters, square bracket, match index. Well, that's actually it. Dot to string. Now, does replace return the string, or does it do it in place? No, it does return it. Good. Much better than mutating state. Right, let's see if that works. It might do. We'll then have some more test cases to do, like uh, when there's a match. Because I mean, this is a fairly dumb matching. If I if I give it a string with open squiggly, open squiggly, then some text, and then two closes, that'll that'll go mental. And it doesn't work anyway. All right, let's. Yes. My goodness, I miss having an actual mouse. My laptop only has uh, one normal USB port, and I need to plug my headset into that. I've got two USB th three Thunderbolt things, but my mice that I have available do not use that, and none of them are Bluetooth. So rubbish. Index was outside of the bounds of the array. I wonder if that is one based. I have a vague feeling that regex is one based. I kind of wish index out of bounds exceptions would tell you the count of the items in the thing that threw the exception and the value that you asked for. No index was out of bounds still. Which means that match index might not be the number count of the matches. Yeah, it's not. It's the original string. Oh, that's rubbish. Match object. Can't go to definition. Roll of 12. I don't know what the shortcut is, but go, for, go to type definition. Go to type declaration. Right, is there a property on here of use to us? Not on match, maybe on group. Collection of all the captures. Just kind of want to know what the index of this one is. Capture has this index, which is not what we're after. Next question. Does replace have an overload which takes something else other than a match evaluator? That's a count parameter. That's a bit weird. Maximum number of times a replacement will occur. Turn this match evaluator. It's just a delegate or a string match. Right, so as we can't do that, we shall should model through by saying var index equals zero. It's going to be lovely. Uh, index 
left us. Yeah, well. One way of counting, I suppose. And it works. Now the only thing we need to do is work out what we want to do when we get too many parameters, or too few. If we go back to our tests, I don't know what I want to happen when there's too many parameters. Uh, so I'm going to call this when rendering a valid string and parameters and we'll have separate tests for the other one. So in fact when there are too few parameters so let's say uh, formats some test parameter or test value place and if we call uh, render on that and we just provide one parameter. What do I expect that to do? Oh, because of course it's parameter array. Yeah. I think that should throw an exception of some form. Well, it definitely should throw an exception. What exception? Is there a format exception? Let's do should throw format. The exception that is thrown when the for invalid or when a suspect there's some interesting text wrapping going on there. When the format of an argument is valid. Or when a composite format is not well formed. Uh, maybe the string one string format. And uh, let's use a format exception. Although it's not technically a formatting exception, this is a lack of parameters exception. Do an argument exception for that. Right. And the reverse. What happens if you provide more parameters than there are formatting flags? Do we care or do we just not use them? I think we don't care to be honest. It means we don't need to write a separate method for that one, we can just put it here. Just do that. You know what, I am going to use a format exception, I prefer it. So in our extension, we now want to say let's do that. Say uh, if index is to than or equal to parameter length row. Format exception. Let's 
string message. Uh, not param. Oh, param. Says, uh, to render the string. Not particularly informative, but it'll do. Now, as I have a complete method here, I'm going to do this. Last, I can't do that. Okay, leave it like that. I was going to increment index after I'd used it, uh, rather than in line here, but of course if I'm returning the value, I can't do that. So let's run all of these. Voila. I think that'll do for rendering. Uh, so we can see we've added a bunch of tests and we've made our rendering extension method. Implement uh, named with a render. Right, now that we've got that, we need that file that I had for writing these. So this is now wrong. So we shall name these. Toggle ID. And state. Afterwards, we shall pass in values. We would if I could format a string correctly. There we go. So this will be toggle response dot toggle ID. Now that's another advantage, as this is an object array, I can use the toggle ID directly, and it'll have two string called on it. Uh, right, so if we just copy that, that in here, and it's state.users instead. Uh, users. What? Users. State.users. Dot user ID response dot oh. toggle ID followed by the user's key followed by the state their value. Oh, and we even forgot to wrap the anonymous in that. And let's put those on multiple lines because it's getting a bit long for one line, really. And do the same for this one. So we have toggle, toggle ID, user key, user ID, and then state. And we'll just copy and paste this for groups. Um, this is groups, group ID, group. Right, now the advantage of this is that now that we've done this, we can implement our own in-memory uh, statistics writer, which is going to be what's going to power the, the dashboard statistics that this uh, API will present. And because we've got named parameters, we can use that same regex actually to extract the names of the parameters. And as we've got a, an array of values, we can then write a statistic out that actually has toggle ID as a property with a value.
Uh, this is very similar to how something like Siri Log works. So, let's, oh. uh, so this is our update toggle state St statistics use template and values. And now that we've done that, got something to test with. Now we could actually write a test for this specific class and check what we get through for these, which is probably a good idea because the likelihood of me breaking them is quite high. So let's go down to here. Handlers, update toggle statistics. Now I'm beginning to think these are going to need folders. Like like they have up here. I originally didn't because I only had one test file per handler. So this is update state. Let's do a directory called up, update state. And in that we shall create a class called Update toggle statistics, it's toggle state statistics tests. My goodness, that's a mouthful and a half, isn't it? Uh, uh, underscore stats, it's new of these. Doesn't take in any parameters. Fact when writing and and uh, um, we've got a bunch of cases we want to check uh, we want to check the setting and the unsetting of a user in a group or rather the explicit on or off and unset of a user in a group and then just the on or off of the anonymous. I think it's just on or off this one. Yeah. Because you can't unset the anonymous state because it has to be something. So do we just test this all at once? One test method and just expect 400 test events? I know that's probably a bad idea. Can do one test for anonymous or one one theory for anonymous, one theory for users, one theory for groups. So let's do a theory. And we'll do inline data for this one. Not sure what the data is yet, but our uh, request new update toggle state request. Does that need an editor ID apparently? Uh, me and a toggle locator, which we don't actually care about. Not going to use it. And we also need a response. going to have a toggle ID of a known value. And now we'll actually call our statistics generator. They write now we'll pass in a fake one of these. So if our writer equals substitute for my statistics, which I still can't type. That is sticks writer. The writer request and the response. And we need to await that, which means the method needs to be asynchronous. And then we're just going to on here say writer uh, received write count. Now I'm going to take this here yeah. 
receive the right count. Toggle ID, so that's the response dot toggle ID. And now we need to log our state. Now, here we're just two stringing the value, which is coming from the enumeration. I think we might just be able to get away with passing the value. So we just do states dot off and one for states on. States state. And onto this we shall say the anonymous state equals state. And we shall also have a null as well. The only downside is that I want a different assertion when it was null. I just want to prove that we didn't receive anything. Uh, that's what we expect when there is a value. Make that nullable. And we can state has value. Don't want to re-implement the whole method, really. We'll have that. Back here, we'll say off and on. Because we're actually going to expect the lowercase versions. String expected. Which is obviously going to fail straight away. Uh, and we'll also do an else wait writer did not receive write count null eh, I don't know how to match an arg array like that arg dot any ring can you match with this like this arg any object array. I don't know if that works or not. Oh well, we'll find out sooner or later. Right, now I'm expecting at least this to fail because we're asserting that we receive um, a lowercase version of the states. And I know that the actual code uh, is just calling to string, it's not to lowering it as well. Something went red, just can't see what. Nothing passed. Uh, on, off, expected, question marks. The test method expected two parameter values, but one parameter value was provided. Ah, okay, so we can't test nulls like that. Oh, no, we can. Mm -hmm. Just need to pass the value. That one passed. Good. Now, now let's actually uh, fix this. But here we're just two stringing it. Value. Not too lower. interesting. It's 
actually received no matching calls. Any calls? Hmm, I was actually expecting that to work. So we've set the anonymous state on it. Ah, response state needs to actually be something. Luckily for us, we can just create a blank view. Ready. Now we just need to do the same for similar for users and groups. I really don't want to have to repeat all of this. Which one? The response is going to be the same amongst every single version of this. So let's extract a field uh, from the constructor read only. Yep, that'll look. Now, can I parameterize this somehow? I want to have a different one of those. And actually, yeah, that's going to be different. And, uh, Yeah, we can. So if we take this, do private, uh, no, private void, acute. All right, async task. Now the request we do need to set up each time, but let's pass that in. Don't need the response. Uh, we do need the state, but only if it has a value. Yeah, we'll just do that anyway. We don't want that. We want to say, uh, we want two callbacks. We want action of my statistic writer. Actually, no, we only want one callback, even better. Expected right call. Cool. I'll just call it expected right. Now we take that, that in here. And that. So it's actually a funk. That task. This now comes in here, and now we can say execute. Now we have a request state and an assertion. I might do that on. Ah, uh, how to format it. Try that. Oops. 
that. Oh, I've had an even better idea. Let's take this and put it back in the method. And then instead of that, we say string format object params object array parameters. Now we can take that, that, do uh, format parameters. No idea if this is actually going to work. Let's find out. I have a feeling it might not work due to the slight weirdness of asserting on uh, arg array or pram array arguments. But we shall see. Yay! Right. So now that we've done that, copy this method. Also, I've just realized that a lot of doing all of that was somewhat useless because we want to actually check that we receive all for this one. Well, that was interesting at least, it's just not helped us. Blast. Because that actually only applies this method. Well, let's hold down Control Z for a while. And we've run out of control Z buff. Oh well. Huh, so Rider doesn't do unlimited undo. Come on, Microsoft Word does unlimited undo. Right. So let's take those, which are our theories, and do click async task. when writing a the event. Name this to an anonymous. I always pronounce it anonymous, even though it's not spelt like that. Or said like that. So this is states nullable and string expected. This one's actually a bit simpler than the previous one. Because we have that part. And just this. Now, for the null, we're expecting the word unset to come through instead. Because anonymous has to be on or off whereas uh, the state of a user or the state of a group can be explicitly set on, explicitly set off, or just not set at all, and in which case the anonymous value takes precedent. So in this case, we have uh, users. There's new dictionary of users and states. I'll make a user ID. But and state, which is that. I'll probably help if I actually put that in with a prayer of those. And we have a different metric name, which is that. We expect the response is toggle ID. In fact, the user ID. to be passed through.
and then the actual state of the thing. Now the groups one is basically identical to this, which is annoying, but I'm not convinced there's a nice enough way of deduplicating it. So we change that to groups. Instead of a user ID, we have a group ID. Which will now fail on that because that's, that's the greatness of strong typing. I can't forget to change which variable I'm writing to here because only one of them will work. And then instead of the word users, we expect groups, group ID. Yeah. Now hopefully this will pass. Awesome. Let's see, check if they were all actually there. Yep. Now the only downside is the duplication between these two methods, which is essentially that differs, that differs, and that differs. If I had more tests, I would probably refactor it to a similar method that we tried earlier, that execute. And it would just take in the request, that string, and that parameter. I'm not convinced it's worth the effort. That's readable enough on its own. There's a slight amount of duplication. But you know, we shall cope. Now let's add those, check what we're committing. So, uh, update, toggle, state. That is sticks. I probably really should have called them stats rather than statistics because I stand a chance of being able to type stats. Maybe by the end of this I'll have learned to type it. Add tests. Fix bugs. Drink tea. No, that's not a useful message, although I am drinking tea. Uh, and now I have a folder for that, so let's move that in there, and the namespaces. Yep, and that's just a namespace change. Tests, uh, move, toggle, date, related, tests into new uh, folder. Right, now that we've done that boring bit-ish, we can actually get on to writing our metrics aggregator. So we've got these uh, write statistics writers here. We've got a logging one, which is just going to log the console. And we've got our statsd one, which is using this statsd li library, but might change later, because there's a version where I can actually inject a, a statsd interface rather than having static access everywhere prefer not having static access things. Now what we can also do is generate our own one. So this is going to be what aggregates our, our statistics for our dashboard. So I'm going to call it um, internal statistics writer statistics writer. Yeah. Internal Statistics Writer, Dashboard Statistics Writer. But it might not be for the dashboard, it's for the API. It's for the statistics endpoint. Oh, I can't really call it the Statistics Statistics Writer. That would be stupid. Yeah, internal will do for now until I think of a better name. Which, you know, might be quite a while off. So we'll create the Statistics Writer interface on here. And now we need to actually do things. The first thing we want to do 
is extract the name of the parameters we want to map the uh, parameter names in that template to the values passed in. Now, I could do it here, or I could do it as another extension. Uh, so it could be something like format.build template app parameters. Which is probably a good idea, because if I do that, I can then test that method on its own. Rather than having to test it as part of this. But essentially, we're going to do something like this var uh, yields. And essentially, just chuck them to some kind of storage. Not really kind of sure what storage. I know that I don't want to use the. Uh, event store that we've got for this because this is going to be dealing with every single query that comes in. It's not really an event. Having said that, if we did emit them as events, we could then run projections against them to build up all of our different stats views. But I think we could just do that with a, a more inline method instead. Hmm. So something like, uh, uh, I don't know, need a, a statistics database of some form, database in inverted commas, because inverted quotes, because it, it, it might not be a database, well, it won't be a database, it'll be a JSON file or something to start with. Let's just call it statistics storage or stat storage. Let's say something like stats storage. Right. Rob, now, probably going to want to pass the template into here as well. Um, stats entry, which is going to have a Tem template, which is format, which occurs to me I should probably not have named that parameter format. It's not a format string, it's a template. Oh well. Properties. And probably the current time as well. Uh, time stamp. Ah, oh, that's why I've got some here. So I'm doing JavaScript notation, which is probably not particularly helpful, despite the fact it is going to be stored in JSON. Call that append. So effectively, we're going to implement a fairly small and probably fairly stupid in-memory database. I think probably get away with just aggregating all of the results, so denormalizing them on write. So rather than actually storing each one of these objects, we work out we work out upfront what we want, and then effectively inside this write method, uh, so we've had private void append, that's entry. There'd probably be something like uh, queries per second equals and yeah, however you'd actually aggregate that. Something to do with the timestamp and working out its resolution. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure.
uh, wireless radio. I'm making a event sourced RESTful feature toggling service for no particular reason. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it. Just so that I can write one. Uh, it's giving me some practice and exposure to ASP.NET Core and .NET Core. Plenty of opportunity to, grum to grumble about things. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm writing. There's um, there should be a link to GitHub somewhere on this page, which has got all the f source code and and yeah, probably not actually more information because the README file is more of a to-do list than anything particularly useful. So what I'm going to do is ignore that for now because I haven't made a decision on what that is, and I'm going to implement this extension method. I'm not convinced an extension method is entirely the right place to do it, but there's enough areas that might make use of it, such as if I wanted to write a serial log writer, I might need to do that to parameter out the P. Eh. So this is a public static I dictionary string object. Yeah, it's called that. This string template params object parameters. Now we want to use this same regex. Should probably extract that to a field. Uh, mm. Build initializer. That's exactly what I wanted actually. Uh, I don't want to call it regex though. Um, let's call it groups. Base groups for me, yeah, yeah, close enough. So this time, rather than doing a replace, we're just going to return a new dictionary. And let's go write some tests. Uh, test project. Statistics. Extension tests. Right, so we've got rendering now. If I end up with lots of extension methods, I'll end up putting a, a folder for extensions and then one file per extension method. So otherwise I will end up with lots of them. But at the moment I've only got two and I only foresee having a couple, so... And also actually we're going to use the same rendering cases. I think. Not sure what will happen with this one. Let's say... Fact. Uh, when building... A property map. Is that what I called it? Template map. It's not really a template map, it's a property map. Right, and as I've renamed that, so I better actually do that. Right. So we get in format an object. And actually, I need different test cases because I'm not expecting the same kind of results. I'm expecting different results. So we get an object of parameters. And then we can expect a dictionary of string object. Expected. Yeah, we're going to definitely need to write our own theory for this. Let's refer to that. Oh, that's pleasant. I honestly thought that I was going to expect to, to give me a... Uh, just to a single body. But, okay. Actually, 
actually if I do this delete that I think we now get the expression option there we go that's better I'm just going to copy that one and start with that uh, template cases Now, need a new dictionary there. String object. That was easy. This one is a new dictionary. Are becoming awkwardly long lines. Oh well. Right, then we have the same thing again, but this time we're expecting one and we're not. We're expecting first to have the value of 1 and 2 to have the value of second to have the value of 2 and those are really not nice really auto format Uh, maybe. Uh, that. One test. Yep, that one's good. That gets one, two, and a dictionary. First mapping to one, second mapping to two. Yep, that's fine. Now this one has got the unbalanced set, but I'm going to do a separate test to catch for that because this is going to actually throw an exception if you do an unbalanced set in it. So now we can use our theory attribute and we'll say uh, member data name of uh, template cases now this should just be a case of doing format build property map parameters should be expected Good luck, it'll actually work. Oh no, it'll fail because I'm just returning a new dictionary which obviously doesn't contain anything useful. The first case should pass. Yep, two failed. As we have three test cases, that is the right amount. Yep, and in both cases we received an empty dictionary, as expected. So now we can go back and actually implement the thing. So what we'll do is say var uh, keys equals groups match. Uh, Yeah. Toure. Oh wait, that's not a useful collection. It's not strongly typed. Uh, 
in fact, could get away with building it by iterating, but instead I'm going to do cast to match. Be like that. And we're going to use the overload to select which provides us with two properties, which will be the match and an index. Not many people seem to know about that overload, but it is incredibly useful. So index is just the count of elements that the select has seen. So if you have a where clause in front of this, doing something or other, if that filters out, say, half the items, uh, let's say this returned 10 matches, and your where clause filters out 5 of them, selects index parameter will go from 0 to 4 because it's only what the select sees not what the original source the index of the item the original source so what we're going to do is now that we've got both is actually is there an overload of two dictionary that does this So we've got a key selector. <laughs> Can't see the IntelliType. Nice. To dictionary. Come on. Source key. None of those have an integer overload. Okay. Uh, what is the easiest way to generate this into a dictionary? Actually, to use a for each loop. Oh, very uncool. Yeah, let's use a for each loop. Do for each that our match, and we use the rather than use our yeah use the type name because then that does the casting for us and we'll have our index equals zero and our results equals new dictionary of string object and then for each result we shall say uh, Result add match dot. Mm. Now I think that's the entire capture. I think what we're after is the first group in that. But I'm not certain. So we'll do that and then we'll say take parameters index plus plus. I bet that's going to convert to a link expression. You can, um, I'm not sure that's right. I'm not sure on the capturing. But for the time being, I'm going to leave it as that until I've proved it works, and then I shall try the link expression. Right, now let's run our theory. See if theory and practice are the same. They won't be. Ah, oh, interesting. It all worked. So, let's see if it still works when we do this. convince the capturing of index is going to do what I want, but apparently it does. And we'll do that. And that. That was good that I guessed group 1 correctly. Because it was a guess. 
so now we've got that tested now go back to our actually let's commit that one commit at a time right back to our tests control alt enter to get rid of any bad white space and let's actually reset source crispin infrastructure statistics internal statistics writer because that's not related to what we we just implemented so statistics implement template property parsing maybe not convinced these are the best coming messages in the world but Hey, this is only me reading them. I'll only have me to blame later. So now that we've got the properties, we're going to want to actually store them somewhere. <coughs> now I'm thinking statistics storage is going to look something like this. Uh, start off with the class, we can extract an interface later when we actually need it. Statistics reg public void Right. Now, I was going to pass an object into this, but it occurs to me I don't actually need an object. What I need is a date time, a template, because I don't know if I'll need that or not, but I might do, and a dictionary of string object properties. So, not quite sure how I'll actually store these, but I do know that I wanted to have multiple projections for different things, and I don't want to have to modify this statistic storage class each time. So we will have public interface i statistics projection. The statistic storage will take in an i enumerable of i. What's that? Oh, my washing machine singing to me. Uh, i statistics projection. Uh, let's do that. Part of me thinks I should tour it. Eh, let's not bother for now. and each projection is completely isolated from the others so what we can do is just say magic of projection as parallel I wonder if that could be stored I could do the adds parallel here I'm not sure what the effects of that are uh, or all projection projection dot whatever it is Project, I guess. <laughs> project or project. Yeah, good old English. And that will get the timestamp, the template, and the properties. And we might also write it somewhere else. Maybe like write it raw to a JSON file. Or JSON file, maybe even just a CSV. CSVs are underrated. Yeah, if we wrote it to a CSV, then later if we decide our projections are bad, we could replay it by just running through the whole of the file, and that file would be append only. Append only JSON slash CSV, perhaps. we could actually implement this on top of the database as well because we don't have an actual event store implementation yet which I should probably do at some point we just have an interface that requires you to be able to write an event and read a stream uh, and we have projections which don't get written anywhere either so our projection needs a project method void project 
actually has identical parameters to this. And then an example implementation. Uh, great derived type might be uh, when a toggle was last changed. Uh, actually, we could do even more interesting toggle history. So this effectively is just going to say uh, history equals new list of story three. Not sure what that history entry looks like yet. So history dot add actually it's not a list of history because this could be for any toggle. So in fact it wants to be a dictionary oh, last dictionary of toggle ID list events or, or state changes not decided what a state changes yet so list of state change so let's do a private class state change so our toggle equals properties uh, values of type toggle ID it's probably not the best way of doing it but we'll do for now well actually we know that the name of the property is going to be toggle ID just do this as toggle ID actually because we're we're getting things through we actually need to we actually need to know which which template we're matching against so we might have if template equals uh, where is my total state statistics so this will be for the anonymous state actually that so assuming we have anonymous state and then say get the properties called state string we've already got the timestamp and we'd say something like history I'll probably create that into a field so we'll need some actual implementation later do things properly history toggle add so again <laughs> we'd actually need to check if it has the right has a value in there or not state change state change or just take time stamp state and now when you query the API it would load the content of this projection say for a given toggle and you'd have an array come back of timestamp and states and you'd be able to graph that when something was changed yeah I think I'll leave this evening because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that yet. Push those up to GitHub. As usual, uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to send me a message, uh, email, or uh, you can send me messages on Twitter, uh, at Ponderdom on Twitter. And all of this code is on my GitHub, which is github.com slash Ponderdom slash Crispin. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a fun rest of your evening.